Are you having graphics card problems? If so, today I'm gonna to show you how to solve the majority of them. Stay tuned. So a few videos back, I recommended a bunch of different programs for Windows. One of those programs was NV Clean Install. It's a great program and I still recommend it. However, I got a comment in response to that video from a very upset viewer. He said that I shouldn't recommend people update their GPU drivers because he followed my directions and it bricked his system. He claimed he had to reload Windows to fix it. Now, I thought to myself, there is no circumstance that I can think of where a corrupted video driver could require you to reload Windows. But with that said, I can't recall if I've gone through the steps in troubleshooting a video driver before. So that's what we're gonna do today. But first, I gotta pay some bills. So check out today's sponsor. Is your copy of Windows 10 unactivated? Well, it doesn't have to be because with today's sponsor, VIP SCD Key, you can get a valid Windows 10 license for under $20. Stop dealing with that stupid watermark on the desktop, the valid license for Windows 10. Also, with an activated copy of Windows 10, you can upgrade to Windows 11 for free. Just go to the link in the description below and pick up a valid Windows 10 license key. During checkout, use the code CYBERCPU for a 25% discount. Once you have your key, go to your activation settings in Windows 10 and click on the link that says Change Product Key. Enter the product key you just purchased and hit Activate. Now you don't have to deal with that stupid watermark that come with running an unactivated copy of Windows 10. Now, on with the video. So yeah, you don't need to reload Windows if you get a corrupted video driver. Chances are the installer just messed up for some unforeseen reason and caused the video driver to not install properly. It's actually one of the easier problems to fix. Also, in that same video, I noticed that my test system here was running a pretty old video driver. It was on version 528.49. The latest driver as of the filming of this video is 560.7. So, since that's the case, we're going to be going through the process of fixing a messed up video driver. But I'm also going to defend my position on why it's important to keep your video drivers up to date. Because I still stand by my recommendation that you should always run the latest video drivers for your graphics card. I mean, it's like the most expensive part of your gaming system. Why wouldn't we want to get as much benefit out of it as we can? So we're going to recover from a corrupted driver and then we're going to see what kind of performance improvements we got from upgrading to the latest drivers. So let's jump on the system and we'll get started. So here we are in Windows 11. This is the latest release of Windows 11 with all the updates installed. And it has the same version video drivers that I had in my a few videos back in the video that we did where I recommended all the different programs and stuff like that. That version is 528.49. So to start this out, we're gonna need a couple programs. So for those, the first one is obviously gonna be NV Clean Install. So we're gonna go ahead and download that. And once we get that downloaded, we're also gonna need a program called Display Driver Uninstaller, or DDU for short. And download that, we just go ahead and click here and get that one downloaded. And it looks like I downloaded it twice, that's okay. All right, we're gonna open up our downloads folder and go ahead and throw one of those away. We're gonna go ahead and extract this one right here so we have it on our desktop. And then from there, we're gonna go ahead and launch NV Clean Install real quick because I wanna check the driver version that I'm currently running. And then as you can see, we're pretty far back. Right now we're currently running, like I said, 528.49. And the latest driver is 560.81. So we're not gonna go ahead and install this quite yet because let's just assume that we have a problem with our display driver that we just can't get to work. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to get the system itself rebooted into safe mode. And to do that, we just go ahead and we can go ahead and close this. We can close this and then we're going to click on start. We're going to go to settings. And then from the settings menu, we're going to go into system. And then we're going to go down to recovery. And the button that we're going to want to push to get into safe mode is restart now right here under advanced startup. Now, every time I do this in a video, I get people commenting that this isn't the best way, that there's other ways to get to safe mode. Like you go ahead and hold the shift key while you push reset. And yeah, I get it. There's lots of different ways to get to safe mode. And honestly, this might not work for you either. This is just the way I'm choosing to do it in this video. However, 
if for whatever reason you do have a corrupted video driver, you might not even be able to get into Windows at all. So if that's the case, what you may have to do is you may have to have three failed startups. And if that happens, your system will automatically go into recovery mode. And if it does, you just go into the advanced recovery and then choose the advanced startup that way. But either way, get into safe mode in whichever way you can and I'll meet you there. Okay, so this is gonna look really similar to the way it will look if for whatever chance you have to go into the recovery mode. So if you do that, you go into troubleshoot. From troubleshoot, you go into startup settings. And then from here, just go ahead and hit restart and it'll give you the advanced startup menu. All right, so once you go ahead and restart the system, this is the startup setting screen that you should get. So to get into safe mode, just push number four and it'll boot into safe mode. And here we are in safe mode. And what we're going to want to do now is we're going to want to go ahead and use DDU, the program that we downloaded, so we can remove our display drivers. So to do that, just go ahead and go into this folder. Go ahead and click on DDU here. And this is going to be an installer right here. So it's actually going to extract the program again. So I guess it's double extract extracted. So from there, you go ahead and double click on this and then click on display driver uninstaller. And then as you can see here, it says this seems to be the first time you've launched, DD, launched DDU. And it's going to go ahead and give you some tips and things of that nature. Now, go ahead and follow these if you'd like, but make sure that you're running this program in safe mode. You don't want to run this program in regular mode. But once you're done, go ahead and hit OK. And for the general options, you can go ahead and leave those default. And then from there, right here, we want to select the device type. And for that, we're going to have GPU. And it's going to automatically detect that I have an NVIDIA GPU. So the next thing that I recommend you do, actually, it's not really critical you do it at this very moment, but you have to do it at some point. So you might as well just do it now. So I would recommend unplugging your Ethernet adapter from your computer. So that way, once you uninstall the driver and then reboot into Windows, you don't want Windows to reinstall install the GPU driver for you. You want it to go ahead and install it through NV Clean Install, which will actually block Windows from installing it anyway. But you're gonna have a little window in there where Windows could possibly go ahead and install a driver that you don't want installed. So go ahead and unplug your ethernet and we'll continue on. Okay, so I got my ethernet unplugged now and all I'm gonna do is go ahead and typically I would recommend doing clean and restart, which is the recommended one. It'll clean out all the drivers and then it'll restart the system. However, I'm not gonna do that, but I'm gonna click clean and shut down because on my system, I've got a capture video so I can release it to you guys because otherwise I may not be able to start the video capture in enough time to be able to get back into regular windows. So in my case, I'm going to click clean and shut down, but you guys can click clean and restart and it should work the same. So to do that now, I'm going to go ahead and click the button and it's going to go through the process of cleaning all of the driver and things of that nature off the system. Now, the primary reason why you want to run Display Driver Uninstaller is because when you update your drivers, it doesn't actually update every component that's included with your drivers. The driver update package only updates the parts of the drivers that need to be updated. There could be many files left on your system that haven't been updated. If the problem you're having is caused by one of these files, then updating the driver isn't going to fix the problem because the driver installer doesn't check whether or not each individual file isn't corrupted. It just replaces files based on their versions. So by running the display driver uninstaller, it rips out everything associated with the display driver so that when you reinstall the driver, it installs the latest version of whatever components are required. Now, let's jump back on the computer, see his mine's done now, it's been shut down, and we'll get the drivers reinstalled. All right, so the first thing you do once you get back into Windows is you go ahead and click into your download directory. What we wanna do is we wanna get NV Clean Install fired up before Windows tries to install display drivers. Because as you can see, is once we get NV Clean Install started, the program itself blocks the automatic driver updates. Okay, so now that we have that done, you can see we have no internet detected, but that's okay because now that the automatic driver updates are being blocked, we can go ahead and plug our ethernet in. So I'm gonna do that now. 
And it's gonna take one second. As you can see down here, I'm still disconnected. Um, and there we go, now we're connected. We can go ahead and push the refresh button and then it'll show us what, what the latest driver is, which is 560.81. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and hit next. And then at this point with NV Clean Install, we get to pick what components that we want installed in our driver package. So for me, like always, I typically, obviously, pick the display driver because it's the required part. I also install the physics engine and I also click on the HD audio for HDMI. And then typically I leave all the other stuff unchecked, but you can go ahead and check whatever components that you want on yours. And then once you do that, go ahead and hit the next button. And then from here, it's gonna go ahead and download the driver installer. And this might take just a second, but once it's finished, we're gonna have a couple more settings that we need to change. Okay, so from this point right here, now I typically still perform a clean installation even if I've already used Display Driver Uninstaller to uninstall the display drivers. And the only reason I do this is for whatever reason, if Windows is able to install a GPU driver prior to me getting NV Clean Install started, then that'll help to remove that. And you can also check that if you right click on the Start button, go to Device Manager, and then from Device Manager, once it opens here, you can see your display adapter right here is still the Microsoft display adapter. So it's just the basic display adapter. And it, you can also see them have a couple other things that are missing too that are probably related to the GPU. So from that point, go ahead and click on perform a clean installation just in case to cover all your basis. And then I would recommend showing the expert tweaks. And then I always enable message signal interrupts. And then I usually keep everything on default. And from that point, go ahead and hit next. And then you can push the button to install it right there. And at this point, it'll fire up the NVIDIA graphics drivers. Click yes to agree. Then you can go ahead and click on custom and click next just to verify that it's only going to install the stuff that you're telling it to. Now, as you can see right here, PhysX is still installed. So Display Driver Uninstaller doesn't uninstall the PhysX engine. So if you're having a problem with that, you might wanna go into Add and Remove Programs and remove that also if you wanna get the latest version of that. However, as you can see, a new version is gonna be installed anyway. So we're gonna go ahead and click the next button and let the driver install. So now that we have the system up and running with the latest NVIDIA drivers, at least we will shortly, it's time to see what kind of performance we get out of it from this upgrade that we got. Now, I only tested a few games just to make the point that graphics drivers are important, but I tried to pick some games from across a spectrum. And also, just to get this out of the way, because I always get asked in the comments if I don't mention it, the system that we're doing these benchmarks are is a Ryzen 5 5600. The system has 32 gigs of RAM, and it's PC 3200, and the GPU is an RTX 3060. Also, the CPU and GPU are both water-cooled, and obviously, the system's running Windows 11. So with that out of the way, let's jump into the benchmarks. The first game we're looking at is Black Mesa. This is a remake of Half-Life 1 based on the Half-Life 2 engine. This will help us judge if we get any performance improvements from older games. And just between us, I picked up most of the classic Call of Duty games in the Steam Summer Sale, and lately I've been playing through them again, and they're still fun, so we can't discount older games. With the older driver, we got an average frame rate of 173.3. We also got a 1% low of 110.9 and a 0.1% low of 86.2. Once upgrading to the latest drivers, we got an average frame rate of 173.1. We also got a 1% low of 114.2 and a 0.1% low of 108.2. So as you can see from the average frame rates, we got a 0.2% difference. That's well within the margin of error and honestly, not even worth talking about. However, once we look at the 1% low and the 0.1% low, that's a little more to talk about. With the 1% low, we got a 3% improvement and the 0.1% low, we got a 23% improvement. Now, while our average frame rate stayed relatively the same, our frame timings did really well. This should affect the playability of the game by giving you much less stutter and more smooth, consistent frame rates. Definitely worth just upgrading your drivers for. 
The next game we're looking at is Counter-Strike 2. This is probably the most popular FPS game on the market. So this game pretty much is going to be used to see what kind of improvement we make in this specific genre. With the old drivers, we got an average frame rate of 137.8. We also got a 1% low of 87 and a 0.1% low of 31.5. Now, once upgrading to the latest NVIDIA drivers, we got an average frame rate of 146.7. We also got a 1% low of 83.2 and a 0.1% low of, well, 18.2. Now, we got a pretty good improvement in our average frame rate, with a 6% improvement on the new drivers. However, with this game, our frame timings didn't do so well. We got a 4% hit on our 1% low, and we took a 53% hit on our 0.1% low. While we did a good improvement in our average frame rate, that hit in our frame timings might be an indication that this specific driver version might not be very optimized for CS2. Which is ironic, because when I launched CS2 with the old drivers, the game made sure to remind me that I was using outdated drivers. Um, thanks I guess. <laughs> So the next game we're looking at is Cyberpunk 2077. This is a pretty intense game in regards to putting a demand on your hardware, and over the last few updates, it's gotten even more intense. So I used this game to test more graphically demanding games, and I also made sure to leave RTX turned on. With our old drivers, we got an average frame rate of 34.3. We also got a 1% low of 30.2, and a 0.1% low of 29.4. Once upgrading to the newest drivers, we got an average frame rate of 34.7. We also got a 1% low of 30.4, and the 0.1% low was 29.6. Now, as you can see, pretty much everything was within margin of error here. We got about a 1% improvement in average frame rate, and we got less than a 1% difference with our 1% and our 0.1% lows. However, even though we didn't get much improvement with our driver update, I was impressed at how playable the game was at 30 FPS. I mean, obviously, <laughs> if you wanted to play this game, you would probably turn off RTX and enjoy a much higher frame rate, but it was still pretty playable at 30 FPS. So, our benchmarks really weren't earth shattering, and ultimately, I wasn't expecting them to be. That's why I only did three of them. However, you have to remember that these improvements, while slight, were completely free. We didn't have to buy a single piece of hardware. We didn't even have to spend hours optimizing our system. All we had to do was upgrade our drivers. That's also one of the reasons why I recommend NV Clean Install, because it makes the process of checking your driver version and upgrading your drivers extremely easy. At least it is with NVIDIA GPUs. I'm sorry for you AMD guys, you're gonna have to find another source. But anyway, if you have a problem with the latest drivers like we did when we took a hit on our frame timings in Counter-Strike, or worse, a system that won't boot into Windows after installing the latest drivers, you can use NV Clean Install to install a previous version to see if that one solves your problem. Now, if you've tried all this and you've even tried several different driver versions and you just can't seem to get your GPU to function, then unfortunately, it might be a sign that you have a bad GPU. I know, it's not news you probably wanna hear, but unfortunately, it does happen. But it might be a good excuse for an upgrade. And you know, while a dead GPU is always sad, new GPU day is always fun. But if everything went as it was supposed to, you should now have a running system. And now that you got a little bit of extra performance for free, why not get a little bit more? So check out this video where I show you how to set up Windows 11 for gaming. I also did that same video for Windows 10, but nobody watched that one. But I'll go ahead and put a link to it in the description below if you wanna see it. As always, you guys have a great day.